Can't get Stevens, sir. Try that. Wing one calling L3. Wing one calling L3. Answer. L3 to wing one. L3 to wing one. Ice forming on wing. Cross front fence. We'll try to get through. Yeah. Tell them to come down. Ten Lindberghs couldn't get through right like this. Wing one calling L3. Wing one calling L3. Answer. Wing one calling L3. Wing one calling L3. Answer. I guess he's down, sir. Yes, with ice on the wings and a bent strut. We can only hope for the best. What do you hear from Cooper and Wood? They are the most difficult routes. Not a thing, sir. I'll well, try and contact Wood. Wing one calling R4. Wing one calling R4. Answer. Wing one calling our four. Wing one calling our four. Answer. I can't get through. Try cover. Wing one calling L one. Wing one calling L one. Answer. L one to wing one. L one to wing one. What's your position? You're asking me? My altimeter's out of order. I'm flying like a nearsighted bat. Lieutenant Cooper was clown in a tailspin. All right, Lieutenant. Keep a stiff upper lip. A stiff upper lip? Mine's so frozen I can slice a rock with it. Hello, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Cooper. Now he's off. Yes, we know he's all right. Try wood. L1 calling R4. L1 calling R4. How are you, Woody? I'm great. Warm as an Eskimo off. Think you'll make it? There's Lieutenant Wood. Yeah. Me? Say, this is the kind of soup I learned to fly in when you were an infant playing ping pong at West Point. Yeah? Well, I'm going to fly right through this soup. And grab off that little cigarette dame you've had your eye on. Well, I'll take that gal to dinner, a show, and supper. Boy, you check in at the base. Lieutenant Cooper is circling the field, sir. Fine. Have his mail put on the truck and send it right into town. Yes, sir. If you only hear from Lieutenant Wood now, I'll feel better. Tough night, eh, Soapy? The old man's been plenty worried. What do you fellas been doing to him? Oh, it's not us. He's worried about you. Why should he be worried about me? Man alive! Do you realize you've come through the worst storm in years? Listen, Matt, a storm is just a flock of raindrops trying to get tough. And besides, those love letters in the mail packs kept me warm as toast. <laughs> Have you heard from Woody yet? No. They haven't contacted him since 6 o'clock. Oh, he's all right. I talked to him. Uh, listen, you can do me a favor. What? Douse the beacon so we'll overshoot the field and be delayed a couple of hours. You want me to be shot at sunrise? <laughs> oh, Clark, keep a lookout for Woody, huh? Hello? Yes? Oh, congratulations, Lieutenant Cooper. You're the first man through. Jackson, Stevens, and Palmer are down. Jackson went into a tailspin. We thought he was done for, but he managed to pull out of it. Well, I'm glad of that, sir. Yeah. Sergeant Byer just called. He's contacted Lieutenant Wood. He'll be here in 10 minutes. Fine. Tell O'Toole and the boys to be ready for him. Now, I just received word from Washington that the airmail is going back on the regular commercial line. So I'm putting you and Wood 
back on your gunnery and bombing units for a while. I think the rest will do you both good. Well, I'm all right, sir, but I don't believe Lieutenant Wood is very well. What's the matter with him? Well, of course, he wouldn't admit it, but I believe he's coming down with a pretty bad chest cold, possibly pneumonia. I heard him coughing pretty badly over the radio. Oh. You think it's that bad, eh? Yes, sir. If I might suggest it, I believe what he needs is a few days rest in the hospital. Oh, yes. All right, all right. I'll speak to him when he comes back. Thank you, sir. I was, uh, I was wondering, sir, if I might drive into the city. Tonight? Yes, sir. I have some very urgent business to attend to. Well, of course, it's urgent, but I, uh, I suppose you'll have to go. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Oh, uh, and Cooper. Yes, sir? You might give my regards to the uh, urgent business. He got in ten minutes ago. What? Yeah. Well, I've got some very pressing business to attend to. See you later. And uh, I'm returning you to your bombing uh, unit. But first, I think you better take a few days in the hospital. In the hospital? Yes. I understand you have a pretty bad chest cold. Why, I never felt better in my life, sir. Well, Lieutenant Cooper said that he heard you coughing quite a bit over the radio. He would. What? I mean, it must have been my motor he heard coughing, sir. Oh, yes, yes, I see. However, we can't afford to take any chance of this kind of weather. And, uh, anyway, I think you'd better turn in early. If you don't mind, sir, I'd like to run into the city for a couple of hours. Is it necessary? Yes, sir. It's very urgent business. Well, uh, I guess it'll be all right. Thank you, sir. Uh, and Wood? Yes, sir. You better hurry. Or well, that urgent business might be insolvent before you get there. Hi, you knee high. Hello, you say. Look sweeter than ever tonight, baby. Go on, that's the beer. Going to your head. No, it's you. You're going to my heart. What's that supposed to do? Sweep me off my feet? I had a tough time getting here, but your eyes were the beacons that guided me as I flew through the storm and rain and... Flush. Want to work now? I'll go and change my clothes and be back in a jiffy. I imagine you ought to look well in a jiffy. start all over again. Good evening, my little songbird. Could I sing something just for you? Uh, could you sing Far, Far Away? I'm afraid I don't know it, but I can sing Down by the Old Mill Stream. No, that's not far enough. But there must be some song you would like me to sing. No, thanks. I can't tell one card from another anyway. By the way, what's your name, little girl? Gretchen. Greetings, Gretchen. No, just plain Gretchen. Are you a captain? Am I a captain? I'll have you understand, I'm a major. Oh, I hope you were a general. Listen, Gretchen, there'll be a general here any minute. And I'll introduce you to him. In fact, I don't know what's delaying. Wonderful. I don't have to sing anymore tonight. I can go out with him. What's his name? His name's General Wood, and he'll be tickled to death. I could like a general a lot. And there's a lot of you for a general to like. I'll go get dressed for the general. 
poor Gretchen. Poor Woody. Sit down, would you? I got a little present for you, Nehi. What is it? Unwrap it. Why, it's perfume soap. Best the money can buy. I have it made especially for you, baby. Read it. With notions of love. From Chief C. Why, how cute. That's my way of getting close to you. Come on, let's go for a ride. I don't know that I should. You're not going shy on me, are you? Listen, soldier, you've got a leave of absence from an army post. But I have a home to check in at. And besides, Mother has a check in concession. Don't pull that Mother gag on me. I got away with them. And besides, every day is Mother's Day for me. No fooling. Tonight I have to be home early. So do I. I always make it a point to beat the milkman by five minutes. Come on. I can't get it started. Don't tell me you ran out of gas here. That's supposed to happen on a country road. This is no time for kidding. What's the trouble? The motor's on the fritz. The coil must be wet. How about letting me have your car, Woody? I could telephone a mechanic and pick you up later. Why not? There you are. Come on, knee high. Not sorry about Gretchen, are you? Oh, don't be silly. That was a great gag. I can take a joke. Attaboy, Woody. I knew you'd see the humor in it. This key doesn't fit. Why, of course it fits. I tell you, it's the wrong key. Yeah? Well, maybe it's the wrong car. Wait a minute. I'll show you. Get out. Maybe I can start it for you. Well, I, I guess this is the wrong key. Well, there you are. We're all set. Don't be so sure. Maybe you have a flat tire. Thanks, Woody. Don't mention it. So, Pink. Wait a minute, General. Wait a minute. Can you imagine me being a sap like that?
Here we come, Colonel Brooks, full of pep, personality, prunes and pancakes, and perfume soap. Fight the Chihuahua. <laughs> She's a beauty. I mean the dog. The crack still goes. I beg your pardon. Could you tell me where I could find the quartermaster? You go down two buildings and turn left. And at the end of that building, you turn right. Then you go to the next building. And there you are. Oh, thank you so much. Don't mention it. I'll see that he doesn't. Come on, Mr. Come on, Mr. Come on, let's go. I forgot my ribbons. So what? You know what makes the old man sore if you don't wear them. You go on up to his office and I'll run back and get him and join you later. Okay, Sophie. Find your ribbon? Now, if you'll allow me, I'll escort you to the quartermaster's office. Good morning, Lieutenant Wood. Good morning, Colonel. Lieutenant Wood was on his way over to your office, sir. He wanted to see you about something important. Why, I just... Oh, all right, come right along, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. And now, if you'll allow me, I'll show you to the quartermaster's office. He's a personal friend of mine. Oh, thank you so much. Well, what do you want to talk to me about? I don't think I'd better take it up just now, sir. Uh, you see, it's a long story, oh, and I... Well, I've got lots of time. Come on to Hamilton's office. Yes, sir. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Well, what's the big story? Well, you see, sir, I think... Um, that is, I, I think... Uh, fine, fine. I'm glad to see that some of my officers think. <laughs> <laughs> What's the dog's name? The teacher. That's funny. Crazy little one. <laughs> How do you say crazy lieutenant? No, call I'll remember that. <laughs> well, isn't it a fact, lieutenant, that you have nothing at all to talk to me about? And the Cooper statement was just a subterfuge to get you away from that uh, young lady? W well, sir... Uh, never mind, Wood. I was a lieutenant once myself. But since you have such a superabundance of vitality and energy this bright morning, perhaps you'd like to see Captain Andrews and help him map out the uh, new tactics for your unit. W well, sir, I... It's a lot of work, Wood. And you better get started right away. That'll be all. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hiya, pal. Did you put me over with the colonel? Put you over? You put me under. You got me into a fine jam. I just spent two hours going over new tactics with Andrews. Now I'll have to spend two days working out the details. Well, there's nothing like good hard work to keep a fellow out of mischief. Where are you going? I'm going out with Sophie and Lakita. Oh, so you've got a Mexican girl for me? No, that's her dog's name. Oh. So her name's Sophie, eh? Yeah, she's from back east. She's a personal friend of the quartermaster's family. I got two days' leave of absence to show the city. Incidentally, isn't that my tie? Yeah, how does it look? Studs for Sophie. Well, you're going to study tactics, and I'm going to put them into practice. So long, pal.
Catherine. Yes, sir. Come here. What's the meaning of this? What do you mean, what's the meaning of it? Don't stall now. When was Cooper here? Cooper? What Cooper? Do you take me for a sap? That's Tom Cooper's soap. How long has this been going on? Are you out of your head? How did I know that was from Tom Cooper? It came through the mail and I thought it was some kind of sample. Yeah? Well, if he thinks he can come between you and me with his soft soap ways, I'll give him a sample of something else. Now, now, boys, I know just how you feel. Where's Cooper? Yes, where, where is he? Where he's is? in the city on leave of absence. Yeah? Well, it's lucky for him he's not here. What's he trying to do, chisel in on me and my wife? Well, your wife got one, too. It seems that several of the boys' wives have received presents from Soapy today, Matt. I think the old man should hear of this. That's an idea. If we can't take a punch at him, we can have him up in the carpet for conduct on becoming an officer. But it's early yet. I don't think the old man will be in the office. Well, all right, then. We'll get him at home. Come right. on. You can't get away with stuff like that. <laughs> oh, well, now, listen. I wouldn't take it to heart, gentlemen. After all, Cooper probably meant it as a joke. I beg your pardon, Colonel, but I know the kind of dizzy women Cooper gives this perfume junk to. And when he sends it to my wife, it's no joke. I know, but I wouldn't get excited. Why, Cooper's a pretty square sort of a chap. I suppose you all sit down and have a cup of coffee. I'll send it to you right away, and I'll be back myself, too, in a minute. <laughs> my wife told me she got hers in the mail. Mine came in the mail, too. Yeah, he thinks yeah. it's pretty smart, doesn't he, huh? Gentlemen, a joke's a joke, but this is different. When a commission officer so far forgets ordinary discipline as to show disrespect to the wife of his commandant, he is guilty of conduct unbecoming an officer. You're right, sir. I understand that Lieutenant Cooper is in the city on leave of absence. Telephone Lieutenant Wood. Get him here at once. Yes, sir. Get me Lieutenant Wood. You sent for me, sir? Do you know where Lieutenant Cooper is in the city? I know several places he might be. All right. Take orderly Enfield with you. Find Lieutenant Cooper. I wish to see him in my office immediately. Put him under arrest if necessary. Yes, sir. All right, gentlemen. You may return to your duties. I'll attend to Lieutenant Cooper. Would you like something to eat? No, thank you. Make it a pitcher of beer. How did you like that soap? It was very nice. Lakita liked it, too. Lakita? Yes, Lakita. I gave her a bath with it. She just loves perfumed soap. Poor Lakita. She'd love it here. Well, we could take her up a couple of bottles of beer. Don't be silly. <laughs> Hello, Woody. How are the old tactics? Well, I've been enjoying my tactics very much. I've been looking for you all day. Colonel wants to see you. Tell him to come down here and I'll buy him a beer. Oh, but seriously, Soapy. Colonel wants to see you in his office right away. What's this, another gag? You tell him. The Colonel's compliment, sir. He wants to see you immediately. If you won't come willingly, you're going to be placed under arrest. And in the meantime, I'll take care of your unfinished business. See you later, Soapy. I hope there's nothing wrong. Nothing I can't make right, beautiful. So you deny sending the soap to my wife and the wives of the other officers? Absolutely. Is that your printing, Cooper? No, sir. Do you recognize that printing? Well, I... I'd rather not say, sir. Enfield. You see the printed reports of the officers. Maybe you recognize that. Well, it looks familiar. Well, you'll notice that's the same as 
That of Lieutenant Woods on the bombing unit report. Hmm. So it's Wood, eh? Hmm. Where is Wood? I believe he's dancing with Lieutenant Cooper's girl in a beer garden, sir. Oh. So that's the explanation of this hocus-pocus about the soap. If the other officers had gotten a hold of you this morning, it might have been more than a practical joke. Wood must be out of his head. Yes, sir. What? Well, I mean, sir, I don't believe Lieutenant Wood is feeling very well. He's been acting queerly lately. Remember, I mentioned something about his health when we were flying the airmail. Oh, yes, yes. And maybe he ought to spend a week or two in the hospital. Well, if I might suggest it, sir, I believe he's been working rather hard. And uh, a month's furlough might snap him out of it. Maybe you're right, Cooper. Wood is needed badly in his unit, especially now that Captain Andrews is sick. And I can't take a chance if he's going stale. That'll be all. Hiya, Sophie, old boy. Hiya, Woody, old Benedict. That's right. Only six more months of bachelorhood. Yeah, and then what'll I do? This dump's been as lonesome as the North Pole for the past month. I guess it means goodbye to the good old days. Ah, oh, but when you see her, Sophie. Eyes like sapphires. Hair like a waving wheat field. A nose that's a poem. Lips the color of the pomegranate and a complexion like milk. Past your eyes are raw. She's personality personified. Boy, you have got it bad, haven't you? What have we here, Mike? No, that's Sophie's Lakita. Sophie's been getting around, visiting a lot of friends for the last few days, and I've had to mind the pub for her. But she leaves for the East tomorrow, and then my nursemaid days will be over. Looks like she doesn't go for army food. What do you feed them, anyway? I don't know. Let's see. Chihuahua's Mexican. Have you tried a hot tamale? That's an idea. Well, by the way, I haven't told you all the news. Dropped in on the old man. He told me the bombing unit is taking off for the maneuver to San Francisco tomorrow. Andrews is sick. I'm to be absent captain. That's great, Woody. I heard that the doctor grounded Andrews, and it won't be long now until you'll be permanent captain. Well, when I am, you'll get that first lieutenant's berth in the bombing unit. Well, I've got to step on it. I've got a lot of work to do if I'm going to get those planes ready. See you later. So long. Come on, Lakita. Time for your bath. Here's a telegram that just came in for Lieutenant Wood. What'll I do with it? Relay it to him at the maneuver. Okay. Don't you want to kiss Lakita goodbye? I better not. They say kissing animals is dangerous. You don't mean to tell me you're afraid you'll catch anything from Lakita? Well, not exactly. You see, Lakita's so small, and she might get something from me, and may not be able to get over it. What? Bye. Bye. I wonder if Lieutenant Wood received my telegram. Maybe he's waiting for you at the hotel, honey. Maybe. Get me a taxi, Ida. Yes, sir. Give us a taxi, boy. Come on, Ida. Yes, sir. Won't you allow me? Please allow me. Thank you. Ida, doesn't that look like Lieutenant Wood? It sure do. Maybe he got mixed up on the train. You wait here a minute. Yes, ma'am.
guess who? Well, it feels like Mary. But the perfume is like Amy. But you sound like Sarah. Well, I like that. Well, I like it, too. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought it was somebody else. Well, under these conditions, I wish I were somebody else. I know you'll excuse me. I was expecting to meet another officer. I made a mistake. Wait a minute. You can't walk out of my life like that. Well, I... Well, under these conditions, if you're expecting to meet somebody else and they didn't show up, maybe I can be of some help. Thank you so much, but I'm on my way to the Metropolitan Hotel. You know where the Metropolitan Hotel is? No, but I'm sure the taxi driver does. You don't know these cab drivers, and it's dangerous to drive with strangers. Well, after all, I don't know you either. But you're going to know me very well. I think you'll find it much more comfortable riding in this car than in a taxi. Yes, thank you. It's very comfortable. Nice wigwam you got here. Looks like a bridal suite. All you need now is a groom. Thank you, sir. You shouldn't have done that. I get a kick out of doing things I shouldn't. You're very kind. I don't find it difficult. Well, I guess you want to get settled now, and I don't want to be in your way. When am I going to see you again? Why, I... Fine, that's a date. I'll give you a ring. Oh, I forgot the most important thing. You haven't told me your name. My name's Ida Johnson. Glad to know you, Miss Johnson. I'm Tom Cooper. A telephone call from a lady in distress to Grand Field will reach me anytime. I give 24-hour service. Goodbye. I'll be seeing you. How come you give my name, honey? I thought it would be fun. No bad news, is it, honey? Oh, my love and a million kisses. <laughs> this show is a lot of kisses. <laughs> Guess there's nothing for us to do but to stay here. How come you all didn't ask Lieutenant Cooper if he knew Lieutenant Wood? I wonder why I didn't. But then, of course, he talked so fast, he really didn't give me an opportunity. I'll have to admit, Tom, you certainly know your country in your moonlight. You shouldn't have done that. I couldn't help it, Ida. I love you. I've loved you since the first minute I saw you at the station. I know I don't amount to much, but next month I come up for a first lieutenancy. And maybe next year, I might be a captain. I know, but I can't marry you. Why not? Please don't ask me to answer that. Then there's somebody else? Yes. Gee, that's tough. See, my roommate comes back from San Francisco in the morning and thought that if I could tell him that you and I were going to be engaged and get married, he'd get a big kick out of it. We might even have had a double wedding. Who is the fellow? Tom, do you know Lieutenant Richard Wood? Woody? Sure, he's my pal, my buddy. He's the fellow I've been telling you about. He's the fellow... Do you mean it? I don't know what you'll think of me. I'm the girl Dick's engaged to. Oh, I've been such a fool. 
I don't know whatever possessed me to give you my maid's name and not to tell you about Dick. I guess it must have been just that I loved you, too, from the first minute I saw you. How could you play a rotten trick like this on Woody? Don't blame me, Tom. I've been through enough already. I haven't slept a wink in two nights. Please believe me. I couldn't ever have really loved Woody. What do you do, go around getting engaged to men just for the fun of it? Or maybe you're just like all the rest of them. I guess I don't deserve anything better than that. Please don't be angry with me. I love you. I swear it. I wouldn't want any love or happiness at Woody's expense. All right, Lieutenant Cooper. Would you be so kind as to drive me back to my hotel? Pearl one. Knit one. Pearl one. Knit one. Pearl one. Knit one. Pearl one. Knit one. Honey, if you don't quit walking up and down this floor, you're gonna make me miss one of these pearls and spoil this time of Santa I was making. I do feel rather nervous. Nervous? You're like a hen on a hot griddle. You ain't nervous, honey. You's in love. Don't be silly. Anyway, why would that bother me? Lieutenant Wood will be back tomorrow. You ain't in love with Lieutenant Wood. Don't talk nonsense, Ida. You only got engaged to Lieutenant Wood because his pappy and your pappy is friends. And Lieutenant Wood loves you and you wasn't in love with nobody else. You're funny, Ida. First you accuse me of being in love and then you try to convince me I'm not. Oh, you was in love, all right, but not with Lieutenant Wood. You was in love with Lieutenant Cooper, and you knows it. You're right, Ida. It's an awful mess. I don't know what to do. All you got to do is explain the situation to Lieutenant Woods when he gets back tomorrow. Oh, I couldn't, Ida. I couldn't. I couldn't bear to tell Dick. It would break him up terribly. Well, it's better to break one heart now than to bust three later on. Sweetheart. Mm. Oh, I thought I never would get back. How have you been, darling? Uh, I've been all right, Dick. Oh, I know. It's good oh, to see you. Dick, put me down. <laughs> <laughs> have you been as lonesome as I have? Well, I managed to amuse myself. And besides, you can never get very lonesome with Ida. Good old Ida. How is she? Oh, she's fine. She'll be in in a minute. Well, what have you been doing with yourself? Have you seen much of the city? Yes, quite a bit. Have you been out to the flying field? No, I wanted to, but I never seemed to get there. Oh, I could kick myself. If I had only thought, I could have had my pal Tom Cooper take you around and show you the sights. Oh, you've got to meet him. He's a grand chap. So what's the matter? Something wrong? Oh, no, it's nothing, Dick. Um, it's sort of stuffy in here. I think I'd like to take a walk. All right. Maybe we could drive out to the field and Tom could have dinner with us in the officer's mess. N no, I think I'd rather walk. I'll get my hat. Lieutenant Wood. Hello, Ida. How are you? Just fine. How are you? Oh, I'm always the same. Especially when Miss Evelyn's around. Ida? Yes, sir? Don't forget to mail those letters. I almost forgot. I think I forgot something else. Well, now, let's see. You got your hat, your coat, and your bag. Of course, you can't mail letters without stamps. That's it, stamps. <laughs> I'll see you later, Lieutenant. Oh, yes, sir. Goodbye. 
fine. Where did you get this? Well, what difference does it make, Dick? After all, a cake of soap is a cake of soap. But this is different. Evelyn, has Tom Cooper been up here? I'm not going to lie to you, Dick. Yes, he has. Please, let's not talk about it. You mean... I'm supposed to hear that you and Tom have met each other and are trying to conceal it from me and I'm not to talk about it? How did you meet him? Well, I mistook him for you at the train. He drove me to the hotel, and when he asked me my name, I gave him Ida. Then we went out a few times and... If it was so simple, then why did you try to conceal it from me? Evelyn, I want to know everything. I have a right to know. I didn't want to tell you, Dick. I hate myself for having to. I love Tom. He loves me. We couldn't help it. It just happened. You mean you meet a man, know him three days, forget about me and everything else, and then fall for him? Maybe you're just like the rest of the girls he picks up and gives soap to. Dick! And that's the kind of a friend I've got. The minute I turn my back, he steps out with the girl I'm going to marry. The double-crossing two-timing. Dick! Dick! Please, wait. Woody, what's new? Get up on your feet. I told you to keep that left up. You're a sucker for a right. No, I'm a sucker for a friend. <laughs> you... Wait a minute, Woody. Wait a minute. I've seen her. I know all about it. I never knew before I was living with a cheap... No... Listen, old man. I read in the paper that the girl you were engaged to was named Worthington. This girl told me her name was Johnson. She didn't know I Just was... Just because I've been a sap, I suppose you think I'm going to keep on being one. If you'll only listen, I can explain everything. What's there to explain? I thought you were my friend and confided in you. You know what that girl meant to me. As soon as I'm out of sight, you pick up with her. Insult my friendship and my fiancé by sending her the things you send those other cheap dames. Then you turn her against me, so she admits she loves you. Well, if that's what you and she call love, I don't want any part of it. But Woody, you're all wrong. All right. That's my business. We're through. I'm going to see the adjutant and move into private quarters as soon as it can be arranged. Come in. Colonel Brooks' compliments, sir. He wants to see Lieutenant Wood and Lieutenant Cooper right away. It's important. Very well. You boys have probably read of the stratosphere flight that the Army is planning. Yes, sir. The objectives of the flight are to try, if possible, to better Commander Settle's altitude record of 11 and a half miles and to study by means of uh, scientific instruments the uh, stratospheric and electrical air conditions at various altitudes. The balloon will be the largest ever constructed and will demonstrate the practicability of such large lighter than air vehicles. It has been my pleasure to learn from Colonel Worthington of West Point who originated the idea of the flight that when the ascension takes place I am to have charge of the undertaking. Now, of course, it goes without saying that the flight will be a hazardous one and that the pilots will have little more than 50-50 chance and that they must realize that considering the value of the balloon and the scientific instruments that their lives will be of secondary importance. You, Lieutenant Wood, because of your mathematical and scientific training at West Point, would, I am sure, be qualified for the 
scientific end of the job. And you, Lieutenant Cooper, because of your record in the air, would be eminently qualified to operate the balloon. Yes, sir. Do you think I can depend on you? Why, of course, sir. I don't know how to thank you, but I... I really can't believe it, sir. You men must act as an absolute unit. And knowing the friendship existing between you, I consider it an added qualification. Yes, sir. All right, gentlemen. I shall communicate my selection to the War Department. That will be all, Lieutenant Cooper. You will receive your further communication from Lieutenant Wood after I've outlined to him the scientific training and investigation that he will undertake during the next month. Gee, Woody, that was a great break the Colonel gave us, wasn't it? When you receive this, I shall be on the train en route to New York. I think it the only logical thing to do. Good luck. Woody, please. We can't let the old man and the outfit down. But I want it understood, definitely, that from now on, the relationship between you and me is strictly that of first and second lieutenant. Nothing more. You boys better turn in and get a good rest while we're inflating the balloon. It'll be well into the night before it's up to capacity. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, that's a beautiful sight from here. Yes, it is. And you're going to see the start of a great experiment. The boys expect to get away by dawn. Well, let's go then.
Well, what do you think, huh? Well, from this morning's weather report, it looks as though atmospheric conditions will be as good as we'll get for the takeoff. Well, then, there's a chance of you making a record, eh? We'll certainly try, sir. be fully inflated when they take off? Oh, my dear. Otherwise, the heat of the sun, when it rises, would cause such an expansion of the gas that the covering would burst. How long will it take them to go up? Well, if everything goes all right, the boys ought to be in the stratosphere in three or four hours. Come, let's go over to the gondola. Oh, do you really think I should? It, it might be embarrassing. Nonsense, dear. Come on, come on. I guess we're ready to start, sir. Well, good luck, my boy. Thank you, sir. And you too, Cooper. Thank you, sir. We'll camp right in the radio room till we know you're down. That's safe. Thank you, sir. Good luck, Dick. Thank you, Evelyn. A very successful trip, Tom. Thank you, Miss Johnson. I mean, Miss Worthington. Good luck, boys. Calling Grant Field. From Lieutenant Wood. Everything going okay. Altitude 58,000 feet. They've almost reached Commander Settle's record. Sixty-eight thousand seven hundred feet, about thirteen miles. Pretty good, eh? Same as previously reported. Ideal for observation. Altitude 68,700 feet. Over 13 miles. If they don't get another foot, that's something to shoot at. If they can get down with those instruments intact, it may mean some startling innovation to science. We'll try another thousand feet. They've gone far enough. Tell them to start down. Grant Field calling Lieutenant Wood. Grant Field calling Lieutenant Wood. They want us to start down. What's the altitude? 72,000 feet. Of almost 14 miles. Start down. Something's wrong. 
with the valve. The gas isn't coming out fast enough. Try it again. No use, it's stuck. I can't do anything with it. We would estimate it. They're hundreds of miles, maybe a thousand miles away. Lieutenant Wood, can't ascertain position. Thunder and lightning, terrific. Low pressure area, expanding gas and causing balloon to ascend again. We're rising all right, but not fast enough to get above it. We're still at 38,000 feet. The bag's only half inflated. If we could get out of this low pressure area, we'd be down in a few hours. We've either got to deflate and get below the storm area, or get above it somehow. We can't last long at this altitude. Still drifting and ascending slowly. Feel confident we'll be able to descend as soon as we leave the low pressure storm area. If the Eastern Weather Bureau report of the storm is true, the boys won't be out of it for another thousand miles. But haven't they got parachutes? Maybe we had better let them use the parachute. Tell Cooper and Wood that I order them to bail out immediately. Fire. My compliments to Colonel Birch. Owing to my confidence that I can salvage the scientific instrument, I don't consider it expedient to leave the ship. I am ordering Lieutenant Cooper to bail out. They'll have to be court-martialed when they get down. Yeah? Well, first you've got to get them down. Put on your parachute. No, thanks. I'm your superior officer, and I order you to do it. Yeah, well, if you can disobey your superior officer, I can disobey mine. Dad, you've got to do something. What can we do? Colonel Brooks has ordered them to come down. I don't care. The man I love is up there in that balloon. Well, when you picked Wood, you certainly picked a stubborn man to fall in love with. It isn't Wood. What? It's Tom Cooper. I have it. If they won't listen to us, maybe Cooper will listen to Miss Worthington. Contact the balloon again. All right, then why don't you let me take the chance? I know more about flying this gas bag than you do. Because your life means more than mine. How do you figure that? Evelyn loves you. I could tell by the way she acted before we took off. And besides, I heard that slip you made when you called her Miss Johnson. That was enough to convince me your stories were true. And anyway, Sophie, I've been thinking things over. I've acted like a fool. Oh, no, yeah, buddy, you were right. Evelyn loves you. I know she does. I tell you that. Wait a minute. Dick, Dick, please come down. It's Evelyn. You've got to bring Tom down for my sake. Please. You were right, Sophie. He does love me. We're both bailouts. I told you so. Come on, let's go. All right. I'll help you with your shoes. You help me with mine. Okay. I can't hear a thing. contact. Get a little rest. There's nothing more you can do here. All right. Grant Field calling Lieutenant Wood. Grant Field calling Lieutenant Wood.
How are you, Cooper? I was never so glad to see anybody in my life. Have you heard from Lieutenant Wood? Not a thing since you phoned that you were picked up. Have you got the chart you spoke about? This is almost as good as having the instruments themselves. I hope nothing has happened to Lieutenant Wood. He means a lot to me. Yeah, I know, my boy. But there's a young lady down at the Metropolitan Hotel to whom you mean a lot. Colonel. Yes? In the news flash. An unidentified balloon has crashed near Quebec, Canada. The pilot is badly cracked up and unconscious. It must be Wood. Do you mind, Colonel, if I hop in a plane and... Okay, shove off. Hello. Get me the Metropolitan Hotel in a hurry. Take care of my ship, will yes, you? Yes, sir. Where can I get a cab for St. Vincent's Hospital? Find one right over there. Hello, Woody. How are you? Hello, Soapy. Are you badly hurt, Dick? Nothing I won't get over, Evelyn. Look, I saved one of the instruments. It's still sealed and shows over 18 miles. Say, that'll be an all-time altitude record. Don't you believe it. With what I found out about stratosphere flying, I can show them how to build a balloon that'll ascend 20 miles. Maybe more. Great. When do you think we'll be able to go up? There isn't going to be any we, Soapy. Stratosphere flying's too dangerous for a married man.